it's just very hard to think that she was I was saying that he murdered my sister. To use the last moments of her life to sit down and to give everything she could. It uh, was one of the strongest demonstrations of strength and fortitude that I've ever seen. Mr. Brimager really took both of their daughters. When Yvonne Baldelli met Brian Brimager in a California nightclub in 2009, she was lovestruck. He was a tall, handsome ex-Marine who promised a life of relaxation, high living, and traveling. Within two years, they moved from sunny Panama, and Yvonne was still gushing over him to her family. But that year, she would vanish without a trace, and her desperate family would work for two long years to help authorities find her. When her dismembered body was found in the Panamanian jungle, the full horror began to unfold. What Brian did to Yvonne, her dog, and her family is disgusting, and that's an under statement. Yvonne's parents, James and Lillian, hardly feel like they got justice for their daughter. And before the case was over, their other daughter lost her life too. And they blame Brimager. This is the full, tragic story of Yvonne Baldelli. Yvonne grew up in Southern California with her parents and two siblings. She had one older sister and one older brother. She was the baby of the family at the time. Her parents split when she was very young, but when she was 14, her dad James married Lillian, who took Yvonne and her siblings as her own children. I just loved her. She was very special and she was a very happy person. Yvonne was nearing her 40th birthday when she met Brian Brimager in a nightclub in 2009. He served in the Marine Corps and there are people who liked him. He had a gregarious personality. I think women found him attractive. Yvonne Baldelli certainly did. Brian was 6'2 and exuded a kind of confidence that Yvonne yearned for. You see, over the past few years, Yvonne had gone through a string of jobs and relationships, all of which seemed to make her feel unsatisfied and wanting more. When Brian came along, Long, he seemed to paint an optimistic future. He was the funny, charming type who was always surrounded by people in awe of him. One might say be aware of people this charming and popular, but few are as monstrous as Brian Brimager. Yvonne could have never imagined what was going on inside his mind. No one really did. She was obviously very smitten with him. Almost to the detriment of anybody else in her life. Some people, when they fall in love, tend to forget about their friends and family and focus all their energy on their newfound crush. Yvonne wasn't always like this, but with Brian, it was different. She hadn't felt like this in a long time, she would tell her friends. But Brian was problematic in more than one way. For starters, he was married to someone else. Mr. Bremager was married at the time and was in other relationships, but was seeing her. Yvonne didn't know that he was married when they first started dating. When she did find out, she was furious. She hated being lied to. So she wrote a letter to Brian's wife. She wrote a letter to Bremager's then wife, describing the relationship that Bremager had with her, that he had with another woman by the name of Kristen Workhoven. You'd think that they'd have broken up after this. Instead, Brian got divorced and continued to see Yvonne on and off. Then in 2011, Yvonne shocked her family with a creepy piece of news. Her words to me was that Brian came home and he says, I'm retiring. At that time, she had lost her job. We told her, forget about the job search. We're going to Panama. The minute Brian suggested the two start a new life in Panama, Yvonne was ready to leave her old life behind. She sold everything she owned. She told me she was going to design clothes and sell them on the beach. She, was she had a plan. Yes, she had. She had a plan and she was so happy. Yvonne took her dog, Georgia, and a few sewing machines with her and flew to Bocas del Toro, a small expat community in Panama in October 2011. They settled in fairly quickly to the island of Isla Canero. Brian would play music at local bars and Yvonne was planning her clothing venture. But this was the first time these two were spending all their time together and it wasn't going well. The violence began to escalate almost immediately when they arrived in Panama. According to several witness reports, Brian was a raging alcoholic and a white powder addict. In Panama, it was easier to produce these than ever before. And with this behavior, Brian became even more possessive manipulative, and violent than he was back in California. There were also people who saw Yvonne being jealous and possessive towards Brian, and this triggered him in a violent way. What the landlord said is that every time they were together, she observed Miss Baldelli being jealous and trying to push and prod Mr. Brimager. We have multiple witnesses who have all corroborated and told us about the numerous times when Brian would 
Yvonne, when Brian would go, Yvonne, when Brian would her, her neighbor could hear it through the walls. Yvonne had made friends in Panama, and there was more than one person who asked her about the marks on her face. Yvonne never denied Brian being the perpetrator, but she always said, I can handle this. Do you believe Yvonne was a victim of domestic violence? Yes. Absolutely. Do you believe Brian Brimager was a victim of domestic violence? Absolutely. Yep, this is how Yvonne thought she could handle it. She fought back, one time smashing Brian's laptop into him. November 8th, 2011 was the last day their neighbors reported a DV incident. After two days of complete silence, they both appeared in town, but Yvonne was covering her face. There's photographs that she took from her own laptop of her left eye having a, a massive a later report would state that Brian was even more violent with her after she broke his laptop. The laptop broke. That had an unintended consequence. The consequence is that they were now both checking their email on the same laptop. Yvonne never stopped mistrusting Brian ever since she found out about his wife or other girlfriend, Kristen. So even though she agreed to move to Panama with him, she was still convinced he was cheating on her. Unfortunately, she was right. When Yvonne checked Brian's emails one day, she discovered an ongoing conversation with his old girlfriend, Kristen Workhoven. Just like he'd promised Yvonne the world, he was promising Kristen he would be with her again. He was saying, I'll be back Back home to spend time with you and help raise our daughter. Yep, they even had a daughter, one that neither Yvonne nor his ex-wife knew about. On November 26th, Yvonne woke Brian up screaming so loud their neighbors could hear everything. Yvonne couldn't believe Brian was still living a double life. Brian couldn't believe that Yvonne had gone snooping around his emails. They got into a fight. That fight escalated. But as their concerned neighbors listened, screams turned to thuds and then turned to silence. After this, there were no signs of Yvonne. Around mid-December, Brian flew back to San Diego. When his friends asked him where Yvonne was, he cussed at her and she started seeing another man. Funny he should be so jealous given that he had multiple relationships at any given time. He also texted one of his friends this, I ditched the... Brian also had to visit Yvonne's sister, Michelle, to pick up the truck he'd left on her driveway. Michelle hadn't heard from her sister in three weeks. So he has to face the sister. He does. And she asks, Brian, where's my sister? Brian said Yvonne had found out about his secret daughter with Kristen. After a fight, she ran off with another man to Costa Rica. He knew nothing of her whereabouts, he said, and Michelle should stop asking questions he could not answer. But Michelle and her parents knew Brian wasn't telling the truth. Michelle even told Brian she would report Yvonne missing to the authorities. Brian said, let's not rush to do that. Let me try to reach out to her via email first. To Michelle's surprise, she soon got an email from Yvonne, letting her know she was alive and would be home for their usual big family gathering on January 12th. Michelle replied, so glad you responded. Didn't want to pry or bug, but I was worried. Wanted to make sure you weren't kidnapped and someone pretending it was you. Ha ha. But Michelle stayed suspicious and so did her parents, James and Lillian. As they emailed Yvonne to catch up some more, she stopped answering. I said, whatever you need, we just need you to be okay. And we're not going to judge you. Just contact us. We just need to know you're okay. And when Yvonne never came for the January 12th gathering, her parents feared the worst. Sadly, it would take two years until they would confirm their fears. First, authorities would uncover an email Yvonne sent to her Panama landlord. Hey, Nene, Brian is a lying, cheating expletive, and I just couldn't stand dealing with it anymore. I'm in Costa Rica for a while with a guy I met at one of Brian's gigs when we first moved here. We've been talking off and on since then, and it's great to be spending time with someone who can be considered a gentleman. It seemed like Brian's story was true, but again, Yvonne's family doubted this was really by her. Michelle enlisted a tech-savvy friend to track Yvonne's email address. Michelle found out that the emails had come from California. Southern California. The emails were actually coming from where Brian Brimager was living. In early 2012, Brian was living with his new bride, Kristen Workhoven. They'd tied the knot two days after his arrival in California. Within two days, he's engaged. Engaged, and he was married that same month. Somebody forwarded me the registry from his new wife. I 
scream. As if there wasn't already enough evidence that Brian had done something horrible to Yvonne. I'm um, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. Were you enraged? I was angry. This is when Michelle filed a suspected murder. Before long, Californian authorities were working hand in hand with Panamanian ones, piecing together witness accounts to unravel a horrifying story. The last time that she was seen alive was when a local saw them going towards a boat dock and they were fighting and Bremiger was dragging her by the arm back to the boat. This was on the same day that they were heard fighting about Brian's double life on November 26th. Just as frighteningly, Yvonne's dog was also missing and her family knew she wouldn't just abandon her to flee to Costa Rica with a new man. I called the Costa Rican embassy to see if she really went to Costa Rica and she said nobody but that passport ever entered the country. When I call the American Embassy in Panama, they said that she never left Panama. You know, I said, we gotta, we gotta do something. With the fake emails as evidence against him, the FBI invited Brian to do an interview. He did sit and agree to speak with the FBI when it was still mostly a missing persons investigation. As there was not enough evidence to keep him locked up, Brian was freed. There hadn't been any proof she had been murdered and certainly no proof that she had been by Bremiger. Meanwhile, James and Lillian flew to Panama to take matters into their own hands. Day by day, they would walk for miles, just looking for clues and asking anybody if they had seen Yvonne. While there were no more witnesses saying they'd seen Yvonne past November 26, many people had seen Brian buying drinks for entire bars afterward. He was celebrating. James and Lillian could only imagine why. And when the authorities unearthed some purchases made from Yvonne's card in Costa Rica, they initially assumed Brian's story was true. But when they investigated Brian's plane tickets in December 2011, they discovered he'd returned to San Diego via Costa Rica. He was spending Yvonne's cash, all the while working hard to create an alibi for himself. He purposefully took a trip to Costa Rica to bolster his story. If all this isn't creepy enough, here's where it gets truly nasty. Mr. Brimager had brought a machete down to Panama with him. Then he had given the machete in exchange for a debt that he owed to a local Panamanian person that was there on the island. You might wonder why a person would own a machete in the first place and bring it with him when moving countries. It gets worse. When the Panamanian local put the machete up for sale on a website, Brian saw the ad, so he logged in to post a comment. It actually used to be mine. I bought it in the States before I moved down here. Don't worry, I only dismembered one stripper with it, so it's hardly used. Sheesh. This would not be funny in any context, let alone when you learn what he did with that machete. When this comment was unearthed, the FBI found the machete and brought it to the US for lab testing. To their surprise, it was clean of DNA. And a year into their frantic searches, James and Lillian were forced to leave Panama. And when we had to leave the island, and when we had to leave the country, I could not live with myself thinking that I left her behind. Lillian had to be hospitalized after a mental breakdown. And around the same time, Yvonne's sister Michelle was diagnosed with breast cancer. The whole family was immensely suffering from the stress of looking for Yvonne. And Brian was playing golf and boasting about having a second baby with Kristen. But in 2013, he would finally be arrested on suspicion of murder. Initially, he was charged with obstruction of justice and making false statements to federal officers. When he was interviewed, he lied about having Yvonne's computer, lied about being Yvonne, lied about impersonating her through emails. He lied about multiple things with the intent to obstruct justice. It was what the FBI could do to get him off the streets before they could use the mounting evidence to bring a more serious charge. One month later, on August 29th, 2013, a hard piece of news rocked Panama and the US. Forensic experts in Panama have identified a human skull found in the Central American country as that of missing American woman Yvonne Baldelli, who went missing two years ago. A backpack was discovered in the Panama jungle by a local resident. Authorities in Panama found the bag contained skeletal remains and some clothing. Yvonne's head was stuffed in a duffel bag and left to rot in the jungle. Are all of the body parts there? No, uh, they were not able to find an entire skeleton because they didn't find all her remains. That was hard. To that was hard to know that there was pieces of her missing. All the bones authorities had found had deep cuts on them. Yvonne was reduced to pieces. It's just very hard to think that she was done. 
Imagine learning that this was the fate of your loved one. When the news hit Michelle, she was already undergoing harrowing treatment with a pretty pessimistic prognosis. The heartbreak would contribute to her declining health. You know, this is one of the most tragic parts of this case. Uh, Yvonne's sister, Michelle Valenzuela, was diagnosed with breast cancer. During the time that she was so desperately trying to find her sister, and so desperately trying to find justice for her sister, she wasn't taking proper care of herself. She was so focused on her sister that she missed a lump in her breast. When Yvonne's remains were found, Michelle's cancer had metastasized to her brain, but she still wanted to fight to put Brian in jail. So the FBI needed to move fast. And so we sought an emergency deposition of a potential witness because we didn't believe that she would be able to make it all the way to trial. Good afternoon, Ms. Valenzuela. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. I was saying that he murdered my sister. Michelle died that day after her testimony. She had fulfilled her role in bringing justice to her sister. To use the last moments of her life to sit down and to give everything she could. It uh, was one of the strongest demonstrations of strength and fortitude that I've ever seen. Mr. Brimager really took both of their daughters. While Brian was in jail awaiting trial and still denying everything, the FBI sent his machete to testing one more time. This time, they discovered its handle was removable. They removed the handle and found that there was under the handle the same DNA as Yvonne Baldelli. Only when Brian was confronted with this evidence did he start talking to his lawyers. He pled guilty approximately of one month before trial. Brian said that after finding out about his double life, Yvonne threatened him with a knife. He grabbed it and in her back. As soon as he realized she was gone, he realized he had to throw her in the jungle. In order to do that, he needed to get her to be small enough to fit in a backpack. So he used his prized machete on her in the bathroom. Then he took her poor dog's life too. George's remains were never found. Something else was discovered. Remember how Yvonne had written a letter to Brian's ex-wife exposing his lies? She had drafted another one intended for Kristen. If the email had reached Kristen, Brian knew he wouldn't be able to start a new life with her. So according to prosecutors, Yvonne never threatened Brian with a knife. Instead, he took her life to prevent her from ruining his plans with Kristen. He had to protect his lies one more time. He was sentenced to 26 years in prison. Nothing, if you ask Yvonne's family. Yvonne will be remembered as a happy, kind person who fell in love with a monster. Brian Brimager will be forever remembered as a monster. He will be around 80 years old when he is released, if ever. Meanwhile, Yvonne's family can try to recover after losing both daughters in their eyes to this man. It will take a long time, but they can rest easy knowing Brimager will not hurt anyone else anytime soon. Hey, thanks a bunch for watching. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know other similar stories? Let me know in a comment, and before you leave, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.